We hope everyone's having a fantastic week. Uh, from time to time, you may have a need in your office to send uh, patient records and documentation um, or uh, possibly a remittance advice EOB uh, to someone for some assistance and maybe help. Uh, from time to time, actually, we receive that information when you're looking for some assistance uh, here at the ICS or from the ICS. Uh, or you may be hiring a compliance officer or somebody just to take a look at your documentation and your notes. In the absence of a business arrangement with a uh, with a bona fide business associate agreement uh, signed by both parties and in place, you want to make sure that that data has been scrubbed, that it's be, been desensitized, or as HHS would put it, uh, that it has been de-identified. And so we want to kind of go over what those components are and how you can de-identify that information. Uh, so whenever you look at a remittance advice or even documentation, anything that can clearly identify who that patient is, you want to make sure it gets removed off of that paperwork. Uh, so if your documentation happens to refer by the patient by their name um, or by their file number or things along those lines, that data has to be removed from the body of the documentation um, and then also any, any, anywhere in the header or in the identification page at the front or whatever it may be, that all has to be removed. Now, there are exceptions to this, of course. Uh, this doesn't include treatment, payment, and healthcare operations. So whenever you're trying to send information in uh, to an insurance carrier, we're not talking about those, those types of data. I'm talking about arrangements where you may be looking to get a compliance officer uh, and expertise involved where you don't have that business associate agreement in place, um, or if you're sending information to the Illinois Chiropractic Society or any other entity for that matter um, of which you're seeking help with or guidance um, or whatever the case might be. In those cases, you want to make sure that you de-identify the patients. Now, what does that mean? And let's go over that. So first of all, I think some of this is really, really very obvious. And of course, uh, anytime the name uh, is included on there, it would be a violation. So you want to make sure the name is off of there addresses are gone. Now, you can leave the state uh, that has been deemed to be okay. Uh, so if you want to leave the state, most of us are going to be Illinois. Uh, that would be perfectly fine. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, any element of dates are also removed. So birth dates, uh, admission date, the first time that they see you date, the date that they were seen, those dates are also supposed to be removed. Um, and uh, what I would tell you is, uh, if you're looking at a particular time frame, then you can give the range that that would have actually uh, uh, taken place uh, based on your conversation with whoever you're sending that data to, if it's relevant. Um, a, a more information has to be removed. Of course, telephone numbers, emails, and any URLs that would uh, be affiliated with the patient, uh, any kind of uh, vehicle identifiers. So if you're doing PI cases and, and uh, you have any kind of indication uh, where maybe you've got uh, um, a, a, a police report and it identifies the patient on there, you want to make sure that you de-identify the patient on all the copies of that as well if you're seeking guidance. Um, make sure that that's done. Fax numbers, uh, uh, any kind of device identifiers with serial numbers. So if for whatever reason you've got a back brace and you've got a serial number and you're sending that information out, that could be construed as patient identifying information and it needs to be de-identified. Uh, uh, de uh, other things, uh, social security numbers, of course, that's a, that's a rather obvious one. Um, uh, any kind of, you know, if you're tracking internet uh, uh, IP addresses and, and uh, for whatever reason in some of your software, if you've got a patient portal system, make sure that you remove that information as well. Uh, any kind of medical record numbers, and I mentioned that before, that you may actually include a medical record number in your documentation. Uh, make sure that that also gets removed. Uh, biometric identifiers. Now, for most of that's not going to play in, uh, but if you have any kind of face uh, identification software or fingerprint identification software, any of those markers, you want to make sure that those are also de-identified or taken out. Uh, other things, uh, account numbers, uh, uh, certificate or license numbers, um, and then really what it comes down to is any uh, uh, any information uh, that can be coupled together also uh, to form a, a, you know, a conclusion as to who the patient is, uh, then some of that would have to be stricken as to make sure that the person on the other end of the receiving could never figure out who that patient is. Uh, so remember, when you're sending that information out uh, to seek help, if you're seeking assistance from a colleague in the absence of a business associate agreement, make sure that you de-identify uh, all of the identifying information, and it may be broader than what you thought before, before you send out those records. We'll catch you next week.